Let's go ahead and create our first Express.js application. Basically, I have an empty project here. First thing I need to do is actually install Express. So I'll switch over to the terminal and type npm install Express. Now that's done, we can switch back to WebStorm and I'm going to create a file, which I'm going to name index.js. And let's start by importing our express module, which as you remember, we use the require expression. Next thing I need to do is similar to how we saw in connect, instead of creating a connect object, what we're going to do now is create an express object. Now, one of the enhancements that we get here, as opposed to what we've seen up to now, if we just open a previous file that we just show you, you can see that here what we're doing is we're creating a server and then the function has to basically deal with sending responses and requests and there's no information as in where the request is coming, under what URL, what the verb is, etc. All of that would have to be processed by us examining the request object. Going back to our new Express application, the app Express object does expose verbs. And one of these verbs is the get, which is corresponding to the HTTP method get. And what I can do here is pass in a URL and then pass in a request and response function. And in this request and response function, I can now use some additional methods that the response object of Express exposes, namely send, which allows me to send back some text. So I can say welcome to Express. Now, if we run this, beforehand we would have to tell the server to listen to port 3000, switch over and do node index.js. Now let's open our browser and we can see that we have Welcome to Express. So let's switch back over here and add some more routes. I can now do app get and let's do customers. And function request response res send welcome to customers section. Now in order to get this new functionality incorporated into the server, what we need to do is restart our server. So I would have to come here, start the server, and then do node index.js. Now, instead of doing that, what I'm going to do is install this program, which is called Nodemon, which is by Remy Sharp. What this does is basically monitor a folder for any changes in the project structure. And if it detects something, it will then restart the server automatically. So now instead of writing node and the name of the application, what I'll do is write Nodemon index.js. You can see that now that is starting up the server. And you'll notice that from now on, I don't have to start this server anymore for new functionality. So I'll switch over here and let's go over to the browser and let's add customers and see if that's all good. Welcome to the customer section. Don't worry about this warning here of JetBrains Chrome expansion. I'll cover that later on. Let's switch back and let's add another path. Now, instead of having to type all that out, I can just get WebStorm to do that for me with a predefined template I had. And I can say customers create, and then here it would be response send. This page is for creating customers. We've got that done. Now notice how I all I do is just save, switch over to the browser. And if I go to the URL and type create, I should get that page up and running. This page is for creating customers. If we switch over to the terminal, we can see that what happened is that at 12, 12, 04, it detects that this file has changed, so it will stop the server and restart it. As I said, Nodemon is really handy for this kind of work because it just restarts the server without you having to stop and start it. So always try and use that in your application development.